Welcome to Ralph's Flybox. Today we're going to tie a pattern that I've been carrying around with me for a season and a half now. Uh, it's a new pattern. It's not unlike a number of other patterns, but it's a new pattern that I've fished on the local waters here. I uh, put together. I thought the, uh, the combination would be effective. It has since proven to be effective through all four seasons, showing me that uh, the pattern in itself has some fish attracting uh, attributes versus only uh, representing a particular nymph or hatch when it's uh, current. So let's go over how to tie it. The pattern is called the Tactical Caddis. I named it that because uh, it's the first pattern that I've tied on the Orvis Tactical Wide Gape Hooks, or it was at the time. Um, I put it in the tin, uh, did its job. So uh, let's go over how I tie it. I start out with a size 14 Orvis Tactical Wide Gape Hook and size 8 dot black thread and 0.015 lead free wire and a tungsten gold bead hook. I'm going to add 5 wraps of the wire it's going to give me additional weight along with uh, seating the bead. And then we're going to start our thread. I'll start behind the lead wire, build a dam, bring it up, and then bring it back behind the dam. Secure that lead in place and the bead in place. Next material we're going to tie in is tan microtubing. I use this quite a bit for ribbing. I'm going to tie in a short section of that. We're going to tie it in right behind the lead. Capture it right there. That will facilitate our taper. And then I like to pull it snug as I wrap back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap back till I'm at a point about a third of the way into the bend and if you were to draw a line from where you're stopping to the point of the hook, it's about a 45 degree angle. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Next material we're going to tie in is the abdomen. We're going to use number 11 olive hairline dubbing, just standard rabbit. It's going to be a fairly slender body. I've fished this pattern over the past year and a half, um, and most of the waters that I frequent pretty much all the waters that I frequent uh, and it has not let me down on any of them throughout Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania and uh, North Central Pennsylvania. It has been a very effective pattern fishing it as the lower fly on a tandem rig or by itself. And you're going to bring your body dubbing up. We need just a little bit more. All I use is a little bit of saliva on rabbit dubbing. Twist it directly onto the thread. We want to bring that up to at least onto the wire. And then we're going to counter wrap our tubing and we're going to pull it fairly snug. I like it tight, it adds to the segmentation. I think it adds to the properties of the tubing. You'll probably get four to five at the most, five at the most, depending on the size of the hook. I bring it up onto the lead before I tie it off. And since you have pulled it tight, make sure you secure it fairly well. 
So before you let it go, make sure you put some wraps before and after. And secure it very well. Now we're going to bring our thread back slightly into the dubbing. And the next material we're going to tie in is Peacock Ice Dub. And we're going to dub about a two inch section of that. Not real heavy though. And you're going to wrap at the, you're going to build up a, a front or a rear thorax at the point of the end of the body. And then bring your thread to the front. You want that to be a, a slightly substantial section. Next pair we're going to tie in is furnace hen. And we're going to tie it in wet fly fashion. Behind the bead. We're going to bring our thread back to about a bead length in, or about a eye length back on the on the hook. You're going to give space because you got another material to go in here. And you're going to wrap that collar with that hen hackle. And you're going to wrap it pretty much the entire feather. You want it to be a substantial collar. So use the entire feather. And I, uh, what I failed to show you when measuring this hackle is you want to measure the hackle so that the fibers before you tie it in extend from behind the bead to the end of the hook. So that's how long you want the fibers. When you tie them in, they're not going to reach that far. But that's how, how long you want them in the beginning. And I wet my fingers and I sweep them back. I sweep the fibers back. Try and get as many as I can. I don't sweat it if a few don't come with me. And you're going to wrap back into it, giving yourself a little bit of room for the next material. And you want to start that flare into that ice dub. And the last material you're going to tie in is a small section. You're going to dub a small section of black ice dub. Doesn't have to be a lot. About an inch lightly dubbed. If you're a little more, a little less, doesn't matter. You're going to build a collar. And you're going to dub that collar behind the bead, tight against that hackle. And then bring your thread up behind the bead and in front of that dubbing. And at that point, give a three or four turn whip finish. And if you got any flyers or you trap something, trim them off. And then what I like to do to finish this fly is I'll slightly pick out the olive dubbing or the peacock dubbing in the back. Not a lot, just so that it starts to come about halfway back the body. It'll naturally pick out if you don't do it. The water will naturally pick it out. But I like to get that flash shrouding the body a little bit. And there it is, the tactical caddis. It's got two trout seasons under its belt. Looking forward to a third. Figured it was time to come out of the tin to be a legitimate pattern. Hope it adds to your box. Good luck. See you on the water.